Security and surveillance comes in many different forms. One of these is CCTV. CCTV technology has an impact on the individual, whether it be negative or positive. The negative impacts include the privacy issue, as there is a fine line between a safety issue and invasion of privacy on one of the individual, and that CCTV displaces crime rather than reducing it. The positive impacts of security surveillance is that it is round the clock surveillance which keeps people safe. The security cameras influence people to do the right thing, for instance a fight not happening due to a camera. Also, CCTV footage helps with the finding of people who have committed a crime. The attacks of the 2005 London Underground bombings is one example of how effective surveillance led to a swift progress in post-event investigations. Legal implications of security and surveillance occur regularly, with the controversial idea of 24-hour video monitoring. This was bound to happen. Issues of privacy have arose. However, the Personal Information Protection and Electronics Documents Act of Canada 2000 is just one example of how the government have set out guidelines of acceptable security and surveillance use. The Act says specifically that is a, uh, if there is a camera nearby, there must be a sign stating that they are being filmed, or else it is seen as an, as an invasion of privacy. However, the Act also states that a camera should not be set up in a place of privacy, such as a toilet, but it should be set up in a place of public area, such as a foyer or the area outside a bar. This is just one example of the legal implications of security and surveillance. Many countries have similar acts referring to security and surveillance, and one of these includes Australia. There is a fine line between surveillance cameras being a safety issue and being an invasion of privacy. The Personal Information Protection and Electronic Devices Act of Canada outlines the accept acceptable terms of surveillance, but in cases such as the surveillance of school security cameras was seen as an invasion of privacy, where they, can, where they could have been truly beneficial with the incidents such as school shootings and stabbings being one example. In the United States, security cameras in schools were intended to be brought in but caused huge controversy because of privacy invasions of children. The idea was outlawed by the Supreme Court who said this, this use of surveillance cameras inherently violated students' rights to privacy under the Fourth Amendment. The Fourth Amendment, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers and effects upon unreasonable searches and seizures shall not be violated. These are just some of the difficulties with enforcing security and surveillance. Law will reform in the future to give clearer guidelines in Australia in respect to what is and what isn't acceptable. The lines between what is and what isn't a public place are becoming more and more uncertain. The Surveillance Devices Act of 2004 significantly widen the circumstances in which federal law enforcement agencies can secretly use data, optical listening and tracking de surveillance devices. However, this is taken advantage of, as in a recent article in the Herald Sun, the author says in Melbourne, so much security footage is taken every day that anywhere in the CBD, there are cameras watching you. In future, the government needs and will bring in new laws concerning video and audio surveillance.